It's back, the segment that gives you way too much information on other human beings. Do you know your teammate from West Ashley is coming up tonight? And game three of the NLDS between the Braves and the Cardinals did not disappoint. Kept us on the edge of our seat until the end. That game is coming up tonight. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brianne Walsh alongside Logan Reaver. Welcome to News 2 Sports Overtime, or at this hour, we call it No Rules Sports After Dark. We're seeing if we can change the name. We're seeing if it's going to go over. Midnight. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching us. Um, and even with Clemson and South Carolina on their open week, we had plenty to keep our attention this weekend. That is the case. Most notably, Game 3 of the NLDS between Atlanta and St. Louis, a pitching duel nail-biter. I say that because I saw that. Yep. How are those puppies doing? They all right? No, they're not. That is our leadoff. <laughs> the leadoff is sponsored by Universal Marble. Postseason baseball, that's what we're talking about. It's one of my favorite sporting events. The rosters are whittled down. Strategy comes into play, maybe more than it should. But really, we find out which teams have it all and who can handle the pressure. Because as we learned this week, pressure makes diamonds. You know it. And that was the case tonight. The Braves and Cardinals tied at one apiece coming into today. Game three in a packed St. Louis house. The story through eight innings? The pitching was phenomenal. I know everyone likes high scoring, high powered offensive games, but you gotta love good pitching. For Atlanta, it was Mike Soroka. He was the starter great once he got going, but in the second inning, with a man on, he gave up the sacrifice fly to Matt Carpenter. Deep to center field, Ronald Acuna gets the out, but that scores Marcel Ozuna, so the cards take a one to nothing lead. After that, he was lights out. Soroka went seven innings, giving up just two hits in that one run, no walks. For the Cards, it was Adam Wainwright. His stuff was fabulous. He held the Braves scoreless through 7.2 innings. It was only at the end of the eighth that he started to struggle a little bit. So pick it up, the offense in the ninth. Wainwright went out. Carlos Martinez is in. Ron or Ron, they intentionally walk Brian McCann, who had been struggling. They get to Dansby Swanson, who absolutely crushes this one to left field. He's going to get a double out of that one. Run scores. We're tied up at one. Dansby's fired up. The Braves have new life, new momentum. Then it's Adam Duval drives it up the middle. Two runs are going to come home on that one. And Atlanta takes a 3-1 to one lead late in the ninth inning of game three. Mike Melanson came in for Atlanta to shut the door and shut it. He does a fly out to Ronald Acuna Jr. Ends the game. The Braves steal one in St. Louis to take a one-game lead. Game four is tomorrow afternoon at 3.07. That was a good one. Oh, we know it, and you show it, too. Don't show them those fingernails. <laughs> now, the Citadel versus VMI, the military classic of the South. It's a great rivalry, but one that hasn't been back and forth in a long time. The winner of the game, of course, gets the Silver Shaco, and the Bulldogs have had it in their possession since 2002, a.k.a. when people didn't use sarcasm when talking about Nickelback and that they liked them. The Dogs try to keep that streak going another year. The Kedets came to town in full force. Five charter buses came to Charleston, but the Dogs were ready to play, and it started with a bang. Brandon Rady deep down the sideline, of course, to his favorite target, Raleigh Webb, no relation to Charlotte, sets up the Dogs on the goal line, capped off by a big time touchdown from their leader. Rainey drives hard over the goal line and turns into a blood bank stream and shows off those veins just like that. There they are. VMI, who the dogs had figured would run the ball mainly, did it through the air though. Reese Udinski to Jacob Harrison were tied at seven. VMI getting loud on their sideline. Then they drive right down the field after the dogs turn it over on a fumble and score. Cadets lead at halftime. Fast forward to the second half. Dogs trail, but Rainey another barreling touchdown run to put the dogs to within 10. Fourth quarter now, the Citadel working the comeback. Dante Smith swerving and bouncing off dudes like they're in his girls' DMs. And again, a short yardage rushing touchdown from Brandon Rainey. You can feel the dogs trying to take some of that momentum back. And the defense held VMI to a third and five around midfield. One more stop, and they'll get another chance. Yeah, that's not going to do that. The Cadets with a long touchdown to put the game out of reach in the fourth. So for the first time since 2002, VMI hoists the Silver Shaco. Afterwards, the Citadel coaches and players, of course, were upset. So now, how do they respond? We got to challenge ourselves, and uh, really, you got to challenge yourself right now as a man to be able to step back up, all right, and fight back tomorrow. As we got to get back and get back to work. Um, I, I don't know what happened. Um, I don't know what exactly what happened today, but I know we didn't come out hungry, and that's my fault. Uh, we didn't come out ready to go, and that's my fault. We got to find a way. We didn't make enough plays. All right, both sides of the ball. They didn't turn it over once, but that's not surprising. They don't turn it over very often. You got to get them off the field. We just didn't do it. You know, it's just tough pill to swallow. You know, you ain't, nobody wants to be that team that loses to VMI, but you know we're gonna come back to practice tomorrow and get ready for Western Carolina next week. 
This weekend, Charleston Southern was still looking for that elusive first win of the season and their first win under the Autry Denson era. Well, they hosted newly D2 Savannah State, and that was last night. No time to waste. Get right to it after a CSU fumble. Devon Gibbons, the quarterback, has a hole, and no one's there to stop him. Up the middle, Savannah State capitalized on the turnover. They lead 7 to nothing. Charleston Southern, they do answer pretty quickly, though. Jack Chambers fires to the back of the end zone. Jaquan Williams reels it in. Turns and cradles it for the Buck TD. He's pumped its side 7 to 7. But then the Wolves are back for CSU. A field goal attempt later in the first half, but it's not so good. Hits off the left goal post, so no points on another possession. So that was one early issue. Here's another turnovers. Remember, a fumble led to that first Tiger touchdown. Chambers looking to the far sideline. He's picked off. So there's another one, and guess what? It led to another Savannah State touchdown. D'Angelo Durham drives through the CSU defense for that score. Tigers led 16 to 7. And Charleston Southern tried to get more offense going before the break, but Chambers is picked off again. Not a good start. CSU goes on to get the win. They come back and get their first win under the Autry Denson era. I won't say it. Yeah, it's a weight off my shoulder. I can't even lie to you. Yes, yeah. it is. It is. Uh, and not from the standpoint of that uh, you ever ever doubt. You just want to get it done and then off and over with so you can move on to uh, what else you have in store for the rest of the season. Uh, we learn from everyone. Uh, as Coach Denson said, we never, we never lose. We learn, and uh, that's what we did. We definitely learned. Um, it feels great in, in the locker room. The energy is higher than it's ever been, and uh, it's definitely a good feeling. Because some people might have, uh, some people might have thought that they forgot how to win. They forgot, they forgot what it feels like to win. And coming back from this, uh, from this win as a comeback win, especially at home, was a great feeling. Let's turn back the clock of Friday night. Kenny Walker and Ashley Ridge in a full-on blackout for the Swamp Foxes. Early on, it's Darian Larry. Two first names, but only one destination, the end zone. He's the thunder out of that running back crew, and you see why right there. Matthew Duncan and Ashley Ridge would respond on the following possession. He keeps it and on the read and cruises on in for a score. And immediately after, it's time to send the place into oblivion. Shirey's pass off the hands of Perry Wilder, and Tyler Collins pops out of the background like his crush just took her boyfriend out of her bio. Pick six, and the whole crew, they get so excited that they just knock my man down. I'm pretty sure that's not cool, but when you're celebrating that hard, I think anything really goes at that point. However, this shootout ended the other way. The Green Wave pull away in the fourth and take it 42 to 31. Kane Bay hosted Goose Creek Gators as they looked at another win to their record this season. It started off pretty well for the Cobras. Running back Leon Staley takes it in for the first touchdown of the game. Gets right in there pretty easily, but Goose Creek makes up for it right away. Malachi Williams takes the kickoff and he shows off that speed, blows by everybody, gets pulled down, but holds on to the ball and scores to tie the game up at seven apiece. Kane Bay tried to follow it up, but they couldn't get their offense going. Goose Creek stuffs their running game and now what for what might be and we did deem it a play of the game <laughs> as official. receiver Damon Malzahn makes an impressive one-handed catch to give the Gators lead that is a way to hang on to it right on the sideline and they never looked back the Gators take this one 49 to 7. Porter Goud hosted Heathwood Hall in a conference matchup on Friday night homecoming a lot of homecomings on Friday things didn't start great first they received the punt from Heathwood and fumble it to give possession right back to the Highlanders who take advantage of that turnover. Alex Lewis, the quarterback keeper, works his way through the defense for that Highlanders first touchdown of the game. Then on the ensuing kickoff, this one was a little crazy. The Cyclones receive it, but just watch it. <laughs> it's just kind of crazy. It's kind of silly. <laughs> Rondarius Parker just plucks the ball from Walker Carswell. He doesn't fumble it, just kind of takes it away and runs it back like it's nothing. So it's 14 to nothing. Heathwood Hall, but then Porter Gow, they get their offense working. This one pretty fancy. Matt Kelly looking for something, anything, runs almost past line of scrimmage, dumps it off to Kyle Lafayette for the Cyclone score, 14 to 7 at the end of one. Porter Gow made it close, but Heathwood Hall hangs on to get a region win, 34 to 28. And oh man, it is back. Do you know your teammate? Let's learn more about the West Ashley Wildcats. Maybe even too much when we come back. <laughs> 